Hey guys, next to me is the engine that I went to Bonneville with last year. Um, I had completed my goal and got back in the RV to drive back to the airport and the guys switched class of the car and continued to run it. And at some point during the week, it pushed the number five injector O-ring out at the fuel rail, caught on fire and probably blew up at the same time. So I'm going to take the engine apart while those guys are rebuilding the car, see what's going on with the engine, make the repairs necessary to go back this year and I'll take it apart and we'll get to see what's inside. For those of you that don't remember this engine, it's a RS1600 with a 90 millimeter Brian Crower crank. The cylinder head had been with the car for quite some time, but the bottom end was new since I got involved in the program. For those of you with sharp eyes, you'll notice the back of the water pump has been modified. That's in an effort to keep water flowing because it is a long course and you have to try to mitigate heat the best you can. So got the head off and there's a good amount of damage. Uh, the number five piston has a hole in it. And on number six, you can see a combustion trace where it had pressurized uh, past the head gasket. So the head gasket is blown on number six. There's a decent amount of aluminum that's um, been eroded from the chamber. So when you compare any of the other chambers with chamber number five, the area between the exhaust valves is, is ate away and it's plastered all over the uh, combustion chamber. So this head is garbage, which isn't a huge loss because this head had been with those guys for quite some time. And it, we had resized the cam journals before. And, you know, at some point you have to acknowledge the racing parts are just used up. So someone could weld there, but in my opinion, welding around the seats is a bad idea because the aluminum changes um, its temper, it gets soft. And while that would work for like a general repair in your mom's minivan, something like this, it just, it'll just ruin a memory moving forward. So this head will now go uh, into the garbage can. As far as the cylinder goes, it looks pretty terrible too. I mean, I may be able to slide my pinky into the hole in the piston. So there's that, but we'll have to get some acid and clean the aluminum off the bore and then um, hone that cylinder and see if it will clean up. Although, because this is a once or twice a year event, I will probably not reuse this block because um, it's just not worth the risk. You know, that you have the, these are still barely easy to get blocks. It's not like it's a Ferrari engine. So accept the, accept the loss and move forward. We'll grab the crank and the rods out of it and just move to the next engine. But I'll continue to take it apart. And when I get this piston out for you guys, you'll see that it looks pretty terrible. This engine's equipped with a daily PHR dry sump kit. So I'm hopeful that the bearings all look pretty good. All the engines that have the dry sump system on them, the bearings seem to fare very well with the level of abuse. So getting the bearings out is pretty exciting to see how they're uh, living with the amount of runs on them. As far as the rest of the components, I don't suppose we'll have any problems because it burned up pretty quick. As soon as it pushed that fuel injector O-ring out, it just torched that cylinder to pieces. The main saddles were still tight because I still have to pop the main caps up out of the block. But with age and abuse, those will loosen up over time. The bearings look very nice in this engine. Like I said, dry sump, dry sump, dry sump. I mean, look at these rod bearings, they like just came out of the box. Even the cylinder that had the failure in it, the rod bearing still looks reasonably well. I'm a big fan of these King coated bearings. I think that's some of the neatest technology to come to market in the last few years. The main bearings are from ACL. They come coated and they also look great. As you can see, the piston's just destroyed. That black overheated aluminum, like once the piston overheats, displaces the oil and just starts to scrub the cylinder down. And it's just really, really gross. The crankshaft looks good, nothing funny going on there. I'll reuse these connecting rods. I just need to get some acid and wash that piston off the one rod. 
As far as a head gasket goes, I'm going to upgrade to a firing on this engine now. It's just a lot of time under wide open throttle and without really being able to control the heat with that, you know, three or five mile course, you just have to do the best you can. Piston pins that slide out gently like that are a good indication that that cylinder has not been in trouble because the pin bore and pin bore lock relationship has not been changed by vibration or from the pin shaking back and forth. So I hope you guys enjoy this dissection. It's kind of a mixed set of emotions for me because I just hate to see an engine die like this. It's pretty gross. You know, when you lose fuel pressure um, the way that it did, where it's just like isolated at one injector, basically, you know, you're gonna have a, a limited fuel flow at that one injector. It torched that piston out, it blew aluminum down onto the connecting rod and onto the bore and the crankshaft and the main web. Um, just kind of a horrific death. Uh, the cylinder head's junk. The damage on the ends of the head gasket, I won't attribute to that. I'd say that, you know, factory head gasket, this amount of time, this amount of boost, um, we're gonna move to a firing setup on that. Things to be excited about, you know, the bearings look great, and I only bring that up because I've mentioned before the value of a dry sump system. Dry sump systems are, uh, are really, really good at creating a strong oil film to keep the metal parts from touching. And if you look at the rod bearings and the main bearings of this engine, it's a good testament. And while you look at the bearings of this engine, consider how long the engine is wide open. We're talking about five miles of wide open with a lot of that over 8,000 RPM. So pretty wild. But we're gonna use what we can reuse, we're gonna trash what we can't, and we're gonna put it back together and go back at it.